Okay, the first step in creating specifications for your project is going to be to understand the context of use for the project. And the context of use is just how, where, and by whom your project is going to be used. So you want to think through these things because it can cause problems in the long run if you generate specifications that don't match the context of use of your project. I'll give you some examples of that as we go along. So starting off with understanding the situation or environment in which the project will be delivered. Is it going to go indoors or outdoors? Is it going to be used by adults or children? These things all come into play. A good example would be a mechanical horse that we developed several years ago to go inside of a hospital. The project partner no longer wanted it and we delivered it to an outdoor facility where it didn't work because the specifications were all toward an indoor use and it wasn't up to the rugged outdoor use that it faced. Another things to consider are, what are the physical constraints? How heavy can it be? How light can you make it? How big is it allowed to be or small? What are those factors that come into play? A good example would be a bookshelf that we designed for the Disability Resource Center several years ago um, that ended up being too big for the space it was supposed to be used in. So they weren't able to actually get it in the room where it was to be delivered. So that was a failure of specifications. Another piece to consider is the durability of the project. Is it going to be used over many years by many people, or is it something that's going to be used by one person and then it'll be well cared for? And that can have a lot to do with how much testing and how much robustness you need in the project. Further, what's gonna happen with the project when it's not in use? Will it go into storage and it needs to be collapsible or fold up? Or is it gonna be left out on display all the time? All of these types of things will come into play as you're creating your specifications. The example that we're going to use throughout this specification module is the Voss model, which many of you have probably seen out in Discovery Park. It's a large scale model of the solar system, showing the sun and all of the surrounding planets, including the Kuiper Belt. And it's a really cool model and a great example of how really good design specifications can lead to a very successful EPICS project. If you haven't seen this, I recommend that you stop out by Discovery Park and take a look. But as they started to create the context for this solar system model that was going into Discovery Park, there were a number of things that they took into account right off the bat. This is from the very first semester of this project, and they looked at things like the Discovery Park color scheme to make sure that they fit within that. They looked at playground specifications to say, children are going to play on this, how do we make sure that it's safe? They looked at the scale of the project. What kind of scale could they get away with with something that's as massive as the solar system that is educational but still makes sense and is feasible to people? They thought about the durability of materials in an outdoor environment where it would be um, abused by rain, snow, and skateboarders. Um, they thought about a number of additional things such as accessibility, educational standards, and um, how energy efficient the display would be in the long run, as well as who would have to approve it, including a number of boards here at Purdue. So this is a really good example of how to think through all of the factors that could come into play in a design up front so that you don't get too far down one path and realize you're not meeting the context of use. So in recap, understanding that context of use is really key to formulating useful specifications that meet the environment that your project will go into. And well-formulated specifications will take into account all of those factors, the who, what, where, why, and how this project are going to be used. So now it's your turn. Write a paragraph describing the context of use of your project. It could be a list or a, a description in paragraph form. That's up to you. Then take that list and compare it against what's in your design documentation for your team. If there's anything that needs to be updated, go ahead and do that now.